for loving us, for dying on the cross, brother, and for choosing tonight uh, to meet with us and to enlighten us and to refresh us and to heal us and to deliver us from pain, from all kinds of private and public pains, from sins, from, from shame, from guilt, and from the things that are making us sick into your health, your healing power. We're plugging into the river tonight, even as you promised. We're plugging into the river. We're plugged into the river of life. Teach us the unconditionality of your healing tonight. Teach us to take our eyes off of ourselves and to put our eyes on you because you are the one who did anything, who is doing anything, and who is going to do anything that matters. We, we need to learn to be humble. Teach us. The humility of receiving. The humility of simplicity. That humility that causes us to accept you, what you say, like a child. The humility that causes us to come fresh, always to the throne of grace, to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That humility and simplicity makes us like little children in your presence. We receive it tonight because it is far difficult to do it without your grace. So we see grace for simplicity tonight. You are the one who set up tonight it is not the doing of any man. I didn't, I didn't wake up in the morning thinking I had a healing power. But you said, I want you to pray with people, my children, who are suffering. And I want you to pass some information to them. And you put this information on my spirit. And that is what I'm sharing tonight. I pray that hearts will be open. That hearts will be open. At places where things are complicated, that by your grace you will simplify and you will go and do the work that you've always wanted to do, which is to bring relief, joy, and peace to your children. So let them know that you've done everything that you need to do to heal them. And that you are in their spirit today doing even deeper work of healing. I bless your name and I glorify you in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are joining me from on Mr. or on Zoom. Um, everyone needs healing. You know, we, we, didn't, we never thought we did, but all of us need healing. And I approve it because sickness is in different dimensions. The only illness that we always think about are the illness of the body. It's even only recently that mental health and emotional health is jumping to the forefront of the healing movement. And we're beginning to see, not the healing movement, really, of public health awareness. People are beginning to, to come to know that mental and emotional health um, are as important as physical health. And as a matter of fact, you're going to find out that what's happening in the soul is actually more important and critical to how healthy the body will eventually become. And I know some of you have been saved for so long. <laughs> the Lord taught me about tithe yesterday. Tithe. Tithe. 
<laughs> and I've been saved for over two decades at least. Look, I know what the Bible says about it. No, I know what people have said about it. I know um, what what books say about it. But I didn't have a revelation. Of it. See, I had the practice of it. I did it religiously. I did it for so many years with with precision. But I didn't understand it. Just yesterday, I thought today is Wednesday, right? Or today is Wednesday, yeah? Or today is Thursday, right? Wednesday, yesterday, was when the Lord whispered something to me and gave me light. Boom. And that's it. And the question of so many years, because I mean, that's always been a controversy, I probably, you know? And, but I, I didn't bother speaking about it publicly. I, I took it to the Lord in prayer. I wanted to understand what it was about. And for years, just been coasting. But yesterday, the Lord turned something in my heart. Now I know. Now I know. Oh, Femi, something that simple. I want you to know that revelation knowledge is different from just reading the Bible. Revelation knowledge is when God makes your own personal connection to truth. Truth exists. It's a stream of truth that goes through the body of Christ. Right? People teach it. People talk about it. We have home fellowships about it. We have songs we've written about it. We have all of it. But individually, what causes us to experience something? is when God personally grants us access to that truth by revelation, when he unveils it to us, not in a way that we'll go and teach it, no, in a way that we will go and do it. When God shows you the entry point of a principle and aligns your whole life purpose to that truth, you have a revelation as an entry point, and that is an individual experience. It's an individual experience. The same thing with healing, guys. Look, there are two ways God can heal you spectacularly. And I'm talking about physical healing now, spectacularly. You can just come, good, you wake up, boom, someone lays hands on you, you go for a meeting, boom, you leave, and the, the, the thing has expired and gone. There are things that will be healed tonight instantly. That's spectacular. But the core way, the most sustainable way, that healing happens is supernaturally, inceptually, when life flows out of your own spirit. A man's spirit will sustain his infirmity, and that happens daily. All right? That happens daily as you worship God, as you flow in the spirit, as you pray in the spirit and sing to God, you are being healed. In what way? In what areas? Maybe you think you don't need healing because you don't have physical sickness. How about rejection? You suffered rejection in this life so much so that you're so timid in life. That's an illness of, of the soul. And God wants to heal that too because the righteous are as bold as a lion. So God needs to teach you prayer for you. And he needs to heal that he Timidity. He needs to go there and heal. He needs to heal that rejection. There are traumas also that have twisted us. Traumas, things that we've been through that have now put dampened how we can experience life. Things that are interfering with our experience of life. There are people who are married who it was after they got married they realized that there were things in them they never thought was bad. Those are things as well that God wants to heal. Depression. Oh, those bouts of sadness that just come out of nowhere. When you just wake up in the morning or when you sleep at night and you, you're so confused. 
and you don't know where it's coming from, a wave of sadness just washes over you. And that whole day, that whole week is wasted because you can't function. Those are not God's will. And I'm going to read the scripture for you to see that just because we're just getting aware of mental health and emotional health now doesn't mean that God had not already taken care of it at Calvary. He already did. He already did. Jesus already took care of it. So tell me, why am I not getting healed? Well, that's why we're here tonight. I don't know. But it could be any of these reasons. And healing is a very, very sensitive subject. You know, and usually when people talk, they, they put more guilt on people. You know, that it's their fault that they're, that they're, that they're ill. Or, or, or it's because their faith is not strong enough that they're ill. I don't want you to go, I don't want you to go away from here having that kind of mentality. Because I want to do the exact opposite. The Lord Jesus told me to do the exact opposite. Remove your eyes from yourself. What you've done, what you are doing, what you are not doing, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. I want to say this to you, and I'm going to have problems. You know, the Lord has issues with people who are born into Christian homes. They're the ones who struggle with truth the most. Because familiarity with truth can make you think that you know it. Whereas, every time the devil wants to make something common, if he wants to make it to disappear, he overwhelms you with it. Yeah, the things that are rare that you look for, you tend to treasure them. But the things that are so readily available, Christianity, you've been going to church since you were three years old. So it's, it doesn't seem new to you. Yet, how you're going to know is that there's so much frustration in your life. That's how you're going to know that you probably don't know the truth. Is that there will be a lot of frustration. You'll be like, what's this thing they said is like this. So why is it like this for me? If you've stayed enough in Christianity, even that question, you will have enough answers for that you've been learning over the years, excuses why things are not happening. Whereas those who were not in Christianity and just got born again and just first got introduced to it, it tends to make tremendous progress because their exposure to the truth is new and no doubt. They never heard it before. So they hear it with a lot more joy and a lot more eagerness than those who have been exposed to the truth all the years that they've been alive. And that's why I'm warning them that take away everything you thought you knew. If it does not work, then it's not true. Correct. You see, they told you that if it has not worked, it's because you didn't do it. But that's the lie. The truth is the truth. If you pray in Jesus' name, you are healed. That's what scripture says. If you prayed in Jesus' name and you've not been healed, then that's an issue. And needs further investigating. It's not for you to just shrug it off. Because pain is real. God doesn't want his children to be in one more day of pain because he pays the price for our spiritual, emotional, mental, physical healing. We are healed in all dimensions of our being. I'm not saying we're going to be healed. We are healed. It's present continuous. That healing is taking place every single day of our lives. So if you've not experienced this, this spectacular healing, which is the instantaneous one, 
the one that I'm quite 150% certain that you will be experiencing is the supernatural one, the one that happens on a daily basis, the one that happens because Christ is inside you, the one that happens because the life of God is resident in you, the same life that was in Christ Jesus. So what I want to do tonight is to try and remove the blocks, the blockades, so that when you, when next you pray in tongues, you will be sensing the hidden power of God at work in you, because that's what you there to do. The river, as you're drinking of it, the river of the Holy Ghost, as you're drinking of it, it's supposed to be renewing your strength, repairing yourselves, making contact, with your brain cells, releasing the juice of the abundance of life into you and correcting everything that is wrong in your system. But family, why is it not happening? We'll, we'll try to get to it. Isn't it? But first, let's look at what Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He read it clearly that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me. To bring good tidings, to make a sense, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open the prison to them who are bound, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And we know when he was reading it, he was reading Isaiah chapter 60. Um, Isaiah chapter 61. He was reading Isaiah 61. And it says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. The Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, send me to comfort the brokenhearted, and to proclaim the captives will be released, that the captives will be released, and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it the day of God's anger against the enemies to all who mourn in Israel. He will give a crown of beauty for ashes. <laughs> a joyous blessing instead of mourning festive praise instead of despair physical emotional spiritual healing all in this messianic chapter of scripture and if you go to what he eventually did in Isaiah chapter 53 you read it there, he says, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a shoot out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness, and, we, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. All the beauty is gone. He became ashes so that we can have beauty. He said, he is despised and rejected of men. See rejection here. Everything Jesus went through, he went through for us. He went through as us. And so we don't have to go through that no more. Rejected of men, a man of sorrows. Sorrows is in plural. It was different depths and dimensions of sorrow that he bore in his body and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not surely not probably not maybe surely he has borne our griefs he bore it, our grief, and carried our souls. He took it on him. Our souls, our depression, our depths of despair, our shame, our guilt, he took it. Yet, we did extreme him speaking smitten of God and afflicted. 
I'm reading this. Somebody's listening to me and said, but I'm suffering this thing. That's why we're here tonight. She's not supposed to suffer it no more. <laughs> Femi, is it that simple? It is. That's the problem. It is too common. It has become so unreal. It is called a gospel for a reason, guys. It is good news. Something that is too good to be true. That's the gospel. Most of us have never heard it all our lives. All our lives, they will say, give your life to Jesus. It's always about what you do. What you do. No, you're not giving your life to Jesus. That's not what the scripture says. The Bible says Jesus gave his life for you. But they say, give your life to Jesus. No. He was the one who gave his life for me. What do you want to do with my life? I need his life. So I am receiving his life. I'm not giving my life. I gave my life to Jesus in 2000. So he didn't. Jesus gave his life for you. That's the problem. From the day we gave our lives to Jesus, they've tried to focus our attention on ourselves. And so every day you wake up, you don't have any faith because you're not impressed about, maybe you had an argument with somebody yesterday. Your prayer life this morning is in problem. Maybe you did something, you made a mistake, you, you know, did, did something wrong yesterday. You can have faith today because your faith is based on your behavior. And that's the law. That's not grace, guys. It's totally different with grace. Somebody sent me a message. Are you saying that God has forgiven me? That there's no, there's no punishment for sin? I say, yeah, is that the gospel? That's the gospel. So how am I going to behave right? If God is always forgiving me, you don't understand that you have no power within yourself to change yourself. The gospel is, you cannot be healed if you don't hear the gospel. What you heard was religion. What you heard are a number of things you have to do. No. The gospel is about what Christ has done. Which is what I'm teaching tonight. What he has done for you and for me. As you and as me. Two. What he is doing in us right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Ghost is doing in us. And third, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I think the last verse, the Bible says it's given us the ministry of reconciliation. So what Christ is doing through us, is Christ doing it from beginning to end. There's nothing in family, Jacob, nothing. Nothing in me. Without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I can be nothing. Without him, I can have nothing. Look, whether I behaved right yesterday or not, he is God today and he is my Lord, my healer today. That's not going to change. My fellowship with him may be broken. But my relationship with him is secure. And I, what do I need to do to get my fellowship restored? Turn around and say, Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you because I'm forgiven. Thank you, Lord. It is done. Because the Bible says, he is not keeping record of your own. He said, the, the sin and iniquity I will remember no more. The lawless deeds I will remember no more. Don't you understand this? Jesus did not die in 2020. Oh, the oldest of us have been born in 1968. I don't think there's ever that was born in 1960 in this group that I'm talking to today. Perhaps most of us were born in the 80s, late 70s into the 80s, or maybe early 70s. Jesus had been dead. 1,900 years, at least before you were born. 
What does that tell you? Your sin, that you started sinning in 1980, you'd already forgiven it 1,900 years before. Let that sink in. So you can understand that perhaps you've not heard the gospel. What you heard is a bunch of, uh, of behavioral code, which has only led to hypocrisy. Because every attempt of man to change himself will always lead to frustration. And sometimes they must slide. Because the frustration after frustration will defeat you. You can't make yourself clear. Not by your willpower. In fact, all that will make you is a bitter person. And you're going to be judgmental. But when God brings about holiness by his own work within your soul, you will feel it. The humility will be spontaneous. Because you know you didn't make it happen. You will know that this is the work of grace from beginning to the end. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the whole world. That was what they were shouting when Jesus was coming. John the Baptist. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away. Not cover it for a bit. Took away the sins of the whole world. Your sins, my sins. The ones we've committed, the ones we're committing, the ones we shall yet commit. How theological? Because God calls those things which be not as good as In the mind of God, the future has already happened. In the mind of God, the future has already happened. So, I mean, so that means we can go on singing. Let me see whether you can do it. If you know this truth. Don't you know? The reason why sin is a problem for you. Is because you're constantly thinking of it. The moment you realize that Christ has taken care of it. And that sin will not be a problem for you anymore. You see what happens to you. You see what happens. The Bible says the sting of, of sin is low. When the law came. Sin came with it. Because the moment you begin to tell people, don't see the white elephant, don't see a red elephant, don't do this, don't do that, they will be thinking about that stuff. And that's sin consciousness, and it brings sin about that. That's why God says, I am taking care of sin. As long as you keep condemning yourself, you keep beating yourself down, you keep shaming yourself, the life of God within you, the grace, and the life within you will not flow. Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane and he said, my soul is exceedingly troubled. He began to suffer emotionally before he began to suffer physically. And three times he prayed. Because by that time, the sin of the world was coming on him. Because he had been confessing since he came that I came to save the world, to take away the sins of the world. And he was a sin eater. And he ate that nature of sin. He only knows he was made sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God. He did it so that we can become the righteousness of God. So that we will not be seen as sin anymore, but as saved and saints, washed in his blood. And we need to walk by faith. To do that. Otherwise, we're going to be looking at ourselves, at our behavior, at the things we're doing right and wrong, and we, the days we give ourselves props, we have pride. The day we beat ourselves down, we have sorrow. But if we stay looking only at Jesus, waking up in the morning and not saying, Lord, me, oh. no, looking at Jesus, thank you, Jesus, you died for me. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for your life flows in me right now. Thank you because you've made me your son. 
Thank you because you restored me to God. Thank you because I am the righteousness of God in you. Thank you because you're purifying me now. Thank you because your life is working me now. Holy Ghost, teach me. Show me how to. That's how prayer starts. I've not talked about myself. No, 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 no. All I'm talking about is what Christ has done. And that's where the power is. The moment you zoom in on yourself and you're thinking about your weakness and you're thinking about yourself and you're thinking about the things you're doing right and the things you're doing wrong, the power goes. That power disappears. Because in your flesh, well, it's nothing good. And the Bible says, no flesh should glory in his presence. None. Don't bring yourself to his presence. Bring your Christ self to his presence. Why am I having this tonight? I'm confident God's going to heal you because it's not about what I do or what you do. It's about us coming, coming into communion about what Christ has done. Look, we'll be teaching like this. We'll be talking about this. It looks very no cross and healing will be taking place if you connect in your heart. It release yourself to this grace. It is free. You can't do anything to earn it. You can't do anything to lose it. You can't. It is set. It is based on who God is. He is love. Make Jesus the only thing you see. Not yourself. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I am Christ now. Christ is in me. I am saying this in different ways until it enters into your spirit that you must disappear. You must go away and put Christ in the center. Put Christ in front of you. He said, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I will not be moved. Because I will be moved if I look at myself. Because I'm unstable, right? But if I look at Christ, his face is beautiful. In his word, I'm reading what he has done. And I'm saying to myself, why so downcast to my soul? Jesus has paid the price. And he's giving me the oil of gladness. And joy comes out of my step. If I have weaknesses, see, Jesus has borne my griefs on my soul. He took my sickness. And by his stripes, I am healed. I say that, healing starts to flow. It doesn't matter what I've done. Listen, it is not. You were forgiven before you came here. You were forgiven before you came here. If this truth does not enter you, you will not know the love of God. Because you will keep thinking about your goodness. Somewhere inside you, you will be giving yourself props that you've been behaving well. Mm -hmm. You've been, been sacking yourself. And there's no power there. All that's there is self-righteousness. And it's filled the rights before God. You can't even enter prison worship. It is that useless. It's every prop belongs to Jesus. Every prop belongs to Christ. In fact, even when he does great things in your life, you will notice that the glory belongs to him. When he makes you, when he makes you better, when he makes you stronger, when he makes you more loving, when he makes you more forgiven, because you're discovering his love. There are behavioral issues I've been having for decades. Decades. And if you want to know someone who is self-disciplined, it was probably me. I was a disciplinarian. Disciplinarian. Always thinking, you know, I had it under control. I was a disciplinarian. Yes. Those things didn't go. When I thought they left, they left for a few days and they were back again. The frustration until I realized 
wait a minute. It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ. The moment I, it was as if someone, you know, you know what, they change the car from a normal, you know, engine car to, to a, to a, what do you call it now? A turbo charge. When the turbo charge a car, that's precisely what happened to me. Let me tell you the first thing that began to happen. In those days, when I would wake up in it, I would start praying in the spirit. It would take me about 30 minutes to get into it because there was so much. I was thinking about my failure. I was thinking, thinking about my problems. I was thinking about my behavior, things that done wrong. Before the Holy Ghost could get to a point where the river could start flowing in me, it would take 45 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour. But when I realized this thing is Christ, this is the spirit. I am Christ. He is mine. Two minutes into prayer, I'm in the river. I mean, I will wake up sometimes, four o'clock, four o two. I'm already dancing in the spirit. And the power, and the kind of power that's been released. In my life, is amazing, amazing. And the kind of results I started getting, even in my normal life, amazing. And then the peace, all of the behavioral issues that I thought were so massive, they could not be solved. I just woke up some days and I didn't, find the muzzle, the energy, the desire anymore. It was gone. And then when I noticed that, I began to get deeper and deeper into myself. I began to locate things. I began to target them with that energy of Christ. Let's say you're very shy. You don't like going out. You don't like many people. And you know that you need to meet people. You can bring that into the energy of Christ, not in a condemnation kind of way, but in a realization that this is not Christ Jesus. So I let go of this. You realize how defeated sin is. See, the reason why sin is big is because you are conscious of it. If you get conscious of Christ and get conscious of the love, you will see that sin diminishes. That's why the scripture says emphatically that sin shall not have dominion over you. He knew what he was saying. It was because once sin consciousness leaves, sin's power goes. And I began to feel more freedom in his worship in his power. Things that would take me three, four days to deal with. I'm going to deal with them in one hour. Joy. You want to talk about joy? I could literally see my old self where I would normally be depressed. And I could see my new self thriving, dancing, being joyful in those places where there was darkness and sadness before. And nothing spectacular happened. I didn't go for a meeting. I didn't go for an altar call. I did not go to on top of the mountain. I simply sat in his presence. And I let myself receive the gospel like a child. That it's all about Christ. It's not about me. It's about him. What he has done. What he is doing in me. And what he will do through me. All of these things before. They were burdens to me. I don't imagine myself doing this before. I consider it a huge burden. But guess what? Everything is flowing from that effortless place. I've been working all day. But still, I'm as refreshed as ever to do this. 
Uh, because I wasn't thinking about myself all day. How am I going to do that thing? How am I going to do it? It's not about me. It's Christ. So every time I remember this meeting during the day, I just give thanks. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. Thank you. Only you can do this thing. I give you thanks. So I understand now when it says my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So it was in the garden. He took all our sorrow, all our pains, and then on his body, his body was jagged and broken, and his blood flowed, his veins popped. He suffered into his marrows, and the sweat of blood. All diseases, illnesses, of the soul and of the body were laid on him, including coronavirus. He felt the weight of all of that. By the time he got to the cross, he was quiet. He couldn't speak. He was stripped naked and he suffered. He let it soak in. For six hours, he remained on that cross. Six being the number of man. Six being the day we fell. Fell on the sixth day. Six hours he was there. On that cross. Took all of the pain, emotional, psychological, and physical, and spiritual, which is separation from God. When he died, he cried, it is finished. Your work of salvation was finished as much as the work he needs to do for our healing and the work he needed to do for our cleansing and for our ascending into God's image, becoming who God says we will be. He finished. So what should you do to receive? Thank you for the exchange. Thank him for the exchange. As that is that simple. Thank you, Jesus, for you taking my disease. Thank you, Jesus, for you taking my sickness and my pain, just like you ate my sin and my sorrow. I believe you know we're already in prayer meeting, you know, because when I do that, I mean, it's a confession. I'm sorry. I, do, I, don't, I didn't tell you guys, but we already in there. Praise be to Jesus. Surely he has borne our sorrow. Surely he took my pain. Surely Christ, you took my griefs. Surely Christ, you took all my ashes. And you were roasted in my pain and in my sin and in my sickness. And you gave me your life. Praise be to Jesus. That's the first thing. I receive my healing right now. I receive my healing in my soul. Let me, in the name of Jesus, let, 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 me, let me circle back a little bit. And explain something to you because I told you the two ways you could get healed. In order for us to move into that second one, which I say is the most sustainable way, and to be honest, the most realistic way. Faith is not supposed to be realistic, but the most sure way to get healed. Because you're going to heal yourself more in this way than in the spectacular way. The spectacular is when someone prays for you and instantly you get healed. The supernatural is when you literally just learn how to release the life of God in you into your soul and to your body. Now, first of all, understand this. Your spirit is the real you. So when I call your name, when I say um, Jiri, I'm referring not to your body or your soul, but to your spirit. 
you are the inner man. You are the inner man. You are the one that's actually saved. Your soul and your body are roots of your personality, which is your thinker, your feeler, and your knower. Some people call it your being, like in your being, where you are aware of your existence. Because you can think, feel, and you can know things. So that's what gives you what you call your personality, is your soul. And of course, your body is the one everybody is more familiar with, because that's, but that's just the house in which you live. It's the house in which you live. Your spirit is already saved. It's made in the image of God. It is limitless in power. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3, it says that the wind blows where it listeth. No one knows where it's coming from. No one knows where it's going. It says, so if anyone is born of spirit, he that is born of the Holy Spirit is spirit. Your spirit man is born of the Holy Spirit. He has the life of God inside of him. Your inner man, your inner woman, he is made in the very image of God, and it is pure and whole, and it is the site in which the Holy Ghost lives. But the Bible says a man's spirit will sustain it in front of it. So your spirit is the one giving life to your soul and your body. Once your spirit leaves your body, everything disappears. This body falls down at the floor, and it's a flock. And people who have died before say they can actually see their own body when they rise up and see their own body on the floor. Yes, this thing is precious, but it is not all you. So it may be broken down, it may be degenerating, it may be causing pain, but that's not you. You are not the one that is sick. So don't say, I am sick. You say, I see this in my body. Because that's also one of the psychological burdens. That, because sickness is a lifestyle issue right and that's why i'm trying to break it down sickness is a lifestyle issue and because our minds were created to make us comfortable there is a way that our minds and our souls will train us to build our lives around that which we are going through so when we eat what we eat when we sleep when we sleep what we sleep where we sleep or where we go the kind of activities we indulge in, the kind of excuses we give for not indulging in certain activities, all of them were determined, would eventually be determined by the sickness we're dealing with. So, so it can become a rope that ties us down psychologically. Apart from the sickness itself, the sickness, sickness can now become, even if it's that of the mind as well, depression. You begin to you to manage it, you design your lifestyle around it. So sickness can be a lifestyle issue. But let us remember that we are not just our soul and body, we are spirit. Praise God. This thing is always always quenching at least once once in a while when we're doing our um, meeting. Just the light. So. All right, so we're back. So you see, it's sickness is a lifestyle issue. All right, you can it will, because sickness they have a way of uh, sicknesses have a way of making us redesign our lives, and so we have a situation where we feel trapped. We can be trapped in that lifestyle. We can be trapped in it. But it is good for us to understand that there are layers to us. Your soul and your body might be rooted in the lifestyle of what you're dealing with, either emotionally or physically, in terms of sickness and illnesses. All right? Your soul and your body might be steeped in that lifestyle. Do not, do not ever let your spirit forget that you have a spirit and that you are actually a spirit. So that this, you keep a lifestyle of 
submitting that spirit to the spirit of Jesus constantly. Because though your spirit is the life of your soul and your body, the Holy Spirit is the life of your spirit. So if you do not get your spirit hooked up to the Holy Ghost, the source of life, constantly, what will happen is that you will not have anything to give your soul and your body. And that's how this supernatural healing I'm talking about, that's how it happens. That then you know that you are a spirit being. So you are not just your soul and you're not just your body. You are a spirit. And actually that your spirit is the redeemed part of you. Your soul and your body might be trapped in the lifestyle of the illness or the sickness. They may not want to get out of bed. They may not want to, you know, be cheerful. They may not want to do anything. But your spirit, if your spirit becomes charged and full of life, I promise you, your soul will catch fire and your, and your body will jump up. If that life is kept sustained in your spirit, and I'm going to tell you how to do it tonight, so, right, so, because it, it, it is, it is something you have to sustain. I give you less than 60 days. Every trace of that stuff will disappear from the body, from your mind. I promise you. Because everywhere that river flows, everything lives. You are not different. You are not. You are created. Everything created was created by that river. There is a river which makes it glad, the city of the Lord. The dwelling place of the Holy One of Israel. He is dwelling. That's where he lives. He lives in the river. God is in the midst of her. That river. She shall be moved. God shall bring life to that river. And that's why it That river flowed from the person of God. He is the one that is also flowing in those rivers of living water. The Holy Ghost. So even though your soul and your body are steeped in the lifestyle, because you have to maintain some regimen, some, some things, some practices around. I understand that. I understand uh, people who are going through chemotherapy, uh, people who are going through different regimens of healing, that those who are going through counseling, that those who are going through, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how not to let your spirit down. Because the key is this. Hmm? A man shall be filled by the abundance of his own lips. The way we drink into our spirits is through our mouth. So, regardless of what our soul and our body are involved in, in managing our issues, it's okay. You don't want to get out of there. Fine. You don't want to do anything. Beautiful. Take the word of God, though. He himself took my sting, my family. He took my sorrow. The chastisement of my peace was laid upon him by his tribes and healed. Thank you, Jesus, for I'm healed. Trust me. Sustain that. Your spirit is, he said, do our outward man perish. Our inward man is renewed day by day by day. Trust me, a time will come when all of that life will start to flow to your soul and to your body. But the mistake we make is we put our mouth in the lifestyle too. And that's the end of the situation. Once we start speaking the language of the lifestyle and not the language of life, it's all over. You can live the lifestyle without speaking the language of the lifestyle. You can go for your chemotherapy. You can go for your major treatments and your regimens. You can go for it. Don't worry, just go. 
but don't say stuff. Don't say anything. If they talk to you, listen. Okay. 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 And if you must talk about your body, talk about your body in the third person. So you say things like, um, in my leg, I feel in my body. Don't ever say, I am, because that's a spiritual language. I am is your spirit. That's your spirit, separated. I feel in my body this. I feel in my leg that. Because you need to talk to the doctor. I feel in my... This is what you must not do. Don't say, um, um, I am di dialectic. I am... I am autistic. Don't say that. Don't. Don't say that. Describe all of the symptoms in your body as someone looking at your body. Because that, that's actually the truth. That's the truth. You respect me. You don't feel pain. But your body and your soul can feel pain. You know, you say, my soul is kind of sorrowful. My soul is, my soul is troubled. That's how spiritual people talk. Did you say, I am? No, you are saved. You are righteous. You are holy. You are, I am, God's child. I am healed. My spirit is whole. My spirit is great. The earthly part of me, my soul and my body can have issues. But I am whole. So when you speak, you speak the language of scripture. When you say I am, and then you pray in tongues, your spirit man will keep getting bigger. Because every time you say I am sick, you kill it. If it's every time you say, I am, I am a cancer patient, don't do that. Don't do that. I know, I know, I know that, I know that it is work to say that. I know it's work. I know it, it's work. But it's not truth. The truth is that you are a spirit being. The truth is that you are made in the image of God. The truth is that you, your spirit, you are a child of God. The truth is you are limitless. So that that life can flow and grow in you, speak only life. And when you describe your condition of your soul and the condition of your body to your doctors, to your caregivers, speak about it as something that is a bit different from you. Because it's the one that needs, I, when I carry my car to the hospital, to the, to the car mechanic, I don't say, you know, my brain box is not working. I don't say my own brain is not working. My brain, my brain is working. That's why I'm able to bring the car's brain box to you. It's the car's brain box that is not working. <laughs> so we got to fix that. And that is, the, that is the empowerment that you retain as a child of God. It is, that is your spirit because both of them happen through here. A man's heart is filled by the abundance of his leaves. Then his spirit sustains in his infirmity. Now, the spirit itself receives nourishment from the Holy Spirit. Now, if we begin to say the spirit is sick, I am sick. If the spirit man says I am sick, then there's nothing anymore. The life force, the life source is cut off. And that life needs to flow into you 
every day so that in every way, in every state in your body, you're getting better and better and better and better every day. Because your spirit man is actually renewed day by day. The reason why it doesn't feel like it is because you've been taking yourself as one person. Both the spirit and the soul and the body. You clump them together and you say they're sick. Where can we not be restored? If we subsumed our spirit to be under the control of our body, when it's supposed to be the other way around, our body is supposed to be under the control of our spirits. So we speak words that make the spirit to gain ascendancy over the body. Let's make this confession right now. Father, I thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that I am a spirit. I am a spirit because he that is born of the spirit is spirit. Thank you because I am limitless. Thank you because the same life that is in you is in me right now. Thank you because that life fulfills the mandate of Christ inside of me. Thank you because that life is the river of life that flows over my soul and over my body that heals me from inside out. Thank you because every day and in every way, I am getting better and better. Thank you because every day and in every way, I am getting stronger and stronger. So I give thanks for your life is at work in me right now as I praise you in the name of Yeshua I pray now let's begin to pray in the spirit get over set. do not forget take your eyes off of yourself forget about what you're doing right or wrong Take your eyes off of yourself. Put it on Christ. Now he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. We are exactly as Jesus is. His body is sinless. He has no more sickness. He is glorified at the right hand of the Father. So we set our minds on those things right now. We glorify Christ. We exalt the exalted Christ. We magnify the magnified Christ. And as we magnify him right now, his healing power flows inside of us. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power is at work in us right now. Thank you because your healing power is at work in us right now. Thank you because your healing power is at work in us right now. Thank you because your healing power is at work in us right now. It is by grace. We believe in you, Jesus that you bore all our sins and our sickness. You bore all our illnesses and our pains. You bore all our griefs and our sorrows. The chastisement, the punishment that brings us peace was laid upon you by your stripes. We have been healed. We receive that right now. We proclaim it as a reality. We proclaim it as a reality and we magnify your name for it. 
We give you glory and praise. We remove every hindrance in us that is resisting our receiving of this. We release us into your simplicity, O oh Christ. Give us joy in your presence as we take hold of that which you've done. Father, we experience your healing power right now. We experience your healing power right now. For someone who has depression, the oil of gladness is coming out of you today. And a new fire is coming out of you. Is the end of depression and suicidal thoughts. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we come against that timidity. We come against that pain in the soul. We come against that heartbreak. We come against that feeling of inferiority complex. We come against that feeling of rejection. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against that feeling of unworthiness. We release the light of the life of God. The light of the life of God that releases joy and peace in us all. We release it in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, worship him for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, everyone who is here in the night, Give them a revelation of this, of the simplicity of the gospel. That it is about what you have done, not about what we will do, or we have done, or that we are doing. That it is about you, Jesus. Make this truth real to our consciousness. Ingrain it into our minds and our souls. Write it into our spirit to know that it's all about our spirit fellowship with your spirit. Hallelujah. Basking in your perfection, looking at you. And as we look at you, we'll become more like you. Because we will become what we're looking at. If we're constantly looking at ourselves and our sins and our failures and our pains, all we will be doing is we'll be repeating those things. But as we look at you, God, to just to know, and as we look at you, we we'll become like you in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's your program for perfecting us. That you intend to perfect us by revealing yourself to us. That that's how you want to perfect us. By revealing yourself to us, oh God. There is no failure in you. There is no sickness in you. Innocence in you. There is no pain in your glorified body. We look at you, Jesus, tonight, and we are healed. We look at you, and we are healed. We look at you, and we are healed. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I want to pray specifically for joy. Joy, unspeakable and flow glory. The oil of gladness that brings prosperity and peace for everyone who's here in me tonight in the name of all Jesus. Just like you promised me, they will begin to experience newness of life. In the precious and the mighty name of Yeshua, I pray. Marry the people, cannibal seek and by you. I begin to thank him. I don't know where you are in this prayer. Maybe you are still behind me. You're still praying from what I've prayed in the past. Just begin to fellowship with Christ right now. I'll give you about four, four, four minutes to do it before I close. Let your living water flow over our souls tonight. Let your living waters flow over every soul that is here in me. Put your hand on that place where you have a problem right now. Just put it there. It is not about you. Forget about how you feel. It's 
You've come. That's all he asks you to do. You've come. So just treat it as perfect. Lay your hands on that place. You cannot receive love. You can't love. You can't receive love. Something broken inside in your soul, and the lack is making contact with it. <laughs> Put your hands on your stomach and spread it. <laughs> <laughs> Traumas are here. Traumas are here. You begin to respond to life in a different way. You will start responding to life in a more positive way. Because something that was broken is fixed. In the name of Jesus. Yes. You have to go. This is how this evening came to be, in case you didn't know. I was, uh, I have a lot of friends who are sick. A lot of friends who are sick. Some are going through emotional stuff that are deep. So I, I prayed for my friends. And for members of Christ Cafe, specifically every day, I pray for you guys. And specifically, and, uh, because that's my first ministry to you. My first ministry is actually not to preach, but to, to just pray for you. And that I was doing, and sometimes I'll be praying, God would just pour some counseling in, into me. I'd be like, oh God, I'm not sick. I don't know, you know. On Tuesday, as we prayed, 
he spoke to me. The other night he said, when I went to Isaiah 55 that day, and he just said to me, pray for your friends who are sick. And you're going to do this many times. I don't know when next time you're going to do it. He said, you're going to do it many times because there are some things I want to show them that is hindering my healing power from throwing in them. I'm sure that most of you thought I'm going to talk about forgiveness, all those things. They're great, you know, but that's not where the blockage is. The blockage is a lack of understanding of grace. We don't know grace. We think we do, we don't. Because the part of us still feels it can't be that simple now. It can't be that simple. My brother and my sister, it is that simple. And I've tasted of the power of grace. And I've tasted of the weakness and the impotence of the law, of living by the law, of trying to keep the, the will of God by way of power. I was living in darkness. The moment I shifted the grace, is burning light. Everything became easy. I commend you to God. I release you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance amongst them that are sanctified. I proclaim over you that you are forgiven. You're God's child. You are loved, preserved, purposed, protected by His mighty and loving arms. And His plans towards you are great, more wonderful than you could ever imagine. From here to there, it's all God's grace. I sing over you love and grace, faith, power, and peace. God bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, live in thanksgiving. Forget about yourself. Look to Jesus. What he has done for you. What he's doing in you. And what he will do through you. Remember, his yoke is easy. This burden is like, once you start to labor, we drop back into grace. Ask him to love you back to life. Remember, you are different from your soul and your body. Those ones can have issues because they interact with this world. But your spirit is saying, and whenever you say, I am, make sure you are referring to your God self. Every other part of you refer to them as second person. My soul is troubled. My body feels a bit hurt here. My this is like that. It is yours, but it is not you. You are healed. You are whole. And soon that life will continue to grow and will begin to diffuse into your soul and into your body. I love you. See you again soon. This will be on my YouTube channel and this will be on the on the show reel of my mixed lot as well. I love it. And I'm speaking as my Christ self. You know, you feel his passion. When this love, when you understand the love of God, you feel his heart for people. How he really wants to help people. He really, really wants to help you. He's such a loving God. Good night.